afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. I assume that everyone here can hear me. Yes. All right. Punctuality, as you know, is key to success. And I'm happy that all of us here could have been here on time. My name is Sion Bristol. And many of you may have known me by something else. But tonight I want to say, or this evening, I would like to say to all of you, welcome to the up and coming event labeled Fight Night. Now, I'm associated with Bristol Promotions. And for the first time you hear Bristol Promotions has teamed up with Elton Dari Promotion and the Ghana Boxing Board of Control. In, a, in addition to that, Guyana TV Network, the first time being launched here in Guyana. The peace. I would like to first welcome everyone at this head table. To our all surprise, our main event scheduled on April 20th, Elton Dari, our own love, versus the one and only Dexter Marcus. Now, before I say anything much more, I'm going to ask Mr. Peter Abdul to come forward because, as regulatory agency, they must recognize this event come April 20th. Mr. Peter Abdul. Thank you, guys. Um, I think I got a bell phone like this with this microphone. Uh, first of all, very important to uh, a press conference strictly is for the press. The, 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 the intention here is to make sure that you are aware of what we're doing, how we're doing it, when we're doing it, and disseminate that information to the general public. So I, I want to take a few minutes and try and cover this fight for you so you can see precisely where we are, how we got there, and where we're going from here. All right. Um, and I notice among you, there are many new faces in the press. I want to welcome you. Um, I am glad to see there are a few, uh, I don't want to say old ones, but I'm glad to see that there are a few people here who we know and know very well. All right, so let me try and cover this for you. First of all, um, I think it's, it's a new era in terms of boxing. Uh, it's, a, it's a brand new event. We're going to be welcoming the WBA here, uh, which is brand new because we have not fought for a title at this level uh, with the WBA in Guyana before. Um, then the second thing is that we have a new, a new venue. Now, Emirates is, is a venue that we've wanted to test for the longest while. But we actually had a great difficulty getting this card together. So I, I'm very happy that it's finally arrived, that we have a new venue, we've got a new era, we are hoping that this, this is the start of something that we can carry on literally on a monthly basis. But I will expound on that more as we go. I want to recognize that Sion Crystal uh, has obviously done a great deal of work with it. First of all, it is an Elton Dari promotion, you should know that. And, and Elton is, is, is in conjunction with Sion, and he's in conjunction with the gentleman I want to initially uh, welcome. He'll be properly introduced to you, uh, Mr. Mohan Khan. Um, now, Mr. Khan brings something to us that we have not had before. As you're well aware, generally speaking, one of the things that we've missed in Guyana is the fact that our fights don't get too far past our own borders. Um, I remember when Guyana fight night was going on, we had 36 fights televised essentially into the Caribbean area. Mr. Mohammed is bringing what he's bringing on board is streaming. Uh, he is actually the CEO of, and I want to make sure I get this right, uh, Guy Bai, and, and the CEO of Guyana TV Network. You'll see it in the back here. This is important because um, What's, what's happening here is that he's got a, a streaming situation where literally, technically, once you, you download his app, you can actually view the fight anywhere in the world, literally, it's in free. Yes. for free, which is, which is something that we have not had in Guyana for the longest while and has stopped the kind of exposure that we ought to have had over the years. So I'm hoping that that dimension is going to bring uh, a new a very happy and pleasant change to us. Okay, so let me progress from there. All right. Um, 
Before going further, I want to also recognize uh, Manzur Nadir, who is the president of this club, uh, the Speaker of the House, who has been, been very helpful to us in trying to make sure that we got the venue in the first instance and making sure that it wasn't given to anybody else. I'd also like to mention that um, uh, Charles Ramson and, and um, Stephen Nival and the Ministry of Sport have been very helpful. Uh, as I was hoping Steve would have been here today, but he's not. He can't make it. But they have been extremely helpful, and that is the part of the solution that we hope will help to bring, bring uh, boxing back. All right. Um, now, the, the main event for this fight is, is, uh, is, is Elton against uh, uh, Dexter. Um, and when we initially announced it, and we talked to a few people about it, there were two ways that they looked at this fight. The first was, they didn't understand why we are having Guyanese compete for what is very close to a world title. Um, at that level, why should Guyanese be competing against each other? And there were two trains of thought. One is to protect the Guyanese fighter by not letting him have to face another Guyanese fighter. So you have two pathways going on, and there's two possibilities of world titles coming from different directions. And it seemed pointless to have them actually fight each other because somebody has got to lose the fight. All right. The second way of looking at it is that no matter how this fight goes, there's one thing that's going to happen for sure. The WBA world title is going to remain in Guyana, which is a very interesting point. In addition to that, I don't think, I don't think when, you, when you take a holistic view of boxing, what literally happens around the world is Mexicans fight Mexicans for world titles, Americans fight Americans, we sit down on Saturday nights and we look at, at, television, at television, and Americans fight an American for, for a world title. We see what's going on in Saudi Arabia now, and you'll find that British fighters are fighting British fighters for world titles. So there's absolutely no reason that guys should not join that club. So after great deliberation, um, Dexter and and uh, Elton had fought before, as you know, and that was I can't remember the exact date, but it was quite a while ago. And the train of thought, quite frankly, is Dexter has matured. Dexter lost that fight, but. Dexter has matured as a fighter tremendously. Uh, um, Elton used to campaign at Rodney Team, Dexter was at 112. They've met, they've met literally in the middle. Last, the last fight that Dexter had, he knocked out his opponent, so we're seeing a, 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 a new kind of power coming forward. It seemed the perfect time to carry this card, and to carry with it, and on the card, and just to use this as a, as a platform with Mr. Mahoney on board, to bring boxing back to Guyana, so they're fighting every month. And Max, I know we've said that a million times, but it's here. Uh, with the government on board, uh, helping strengthen us financially, with Mr. Mohammed on board, and with our boxes ready to go, I think this is absolutely the perfect time. So let's talk a little bit about the WBA title. The WBA title is, and, and literally, technically, uh, and I gotta tell you this, we have been WBC territory for a very, very long time, as you probably know. And I'm more familiar with the title. I'm on the board of governors of, of WBC, so I tend to push the w, WBC a lot. So the question is, is do we have do we have a history with WBA? So let me tell you our history with WBA so that you, you know. On the 17th of February 2001, Andrew Sixhead Lewis knocked out James Page in the seventh round mm -hmm. to become the WBA 147 pound welterweight champion of the world. <coughs> Not too long after that, on the 16th of July 2002, Vivian Harris uh, had a technical knockout over uh, Diabellus Hurtado, knocked him out in the second round, and became the 135 pound lightweight WBA champion. More recently in 2019, Leonard Salmon, you will remember Leonard Salmon, fought Derek Webster for this same title, the, the WBC gold title. The WBC gold title is one below the world title. Once you get this, the next thing that is supposed to happen to you is you get a shot at the world title. In Leonard, Alan Casey knocked out uh, Webster, and he won the title. He won the Super Midland 168 pound title. This is a WBA gold super flyweight title, 115 pounds. Great, it's great that we've gotten two guys these fighters to actually compete for these titles. Prestigious title, um, and as a, the guy in Boston was happy to sanction that. Because it means that, literally speaking, uh, one of these boys is going to be in a position to fight for a WBA world title, which I'm telling you now, I'm hoping to bring the guy. Uh, and I'm talking to all promoters, including Elton, 
and everybody, even if next to one you fight, I still look at you as a promoter to help to bring that title in. Okay? I want to see that happen. All right. Now, the rest of the card, I will tell you, and we try to put together as best as we, uh, a card as we possibly can, have some highlights in it. Um, I can, go, I, can, I can go through the entire card, but let me highlight a few things that are happening. We've got uh, a former world champion, Stefan De Silva, uh, who fought for the WBA 130 pound uh, uh, um, lightweight title in Australia and won it, is, is going to be on the card. He's here. And this is, this, I think the person will be thrilled to know this, that one of the stars of amateur boxing in Guyana, Keenan Alcock, who needs no introduction at all, is going to make his debut as a professional fighter against Gardner Roberts. Okay? So the rest of the card will be uh, Dylan Charge will fight Jamal Eastman, who's coming out again for the first time. This is e uh, uh, um, uh, Howard Eastman's nephew. Um, Stefan Silva will fight Ricardo Blackman. Lawrence Stewart from the US will fight Imran Khan, or Rowan Imran Khan. Edmund McClue will fight Charvin Eswin out of Barbados. Um, Kevin, of course, will fight Gardner Gar Gar Roberts on your main event, Dexter Marks and Elton Dunn. Um, now, if you give me a chance, I will go on forever and ever. So, I am going to turn this back over to the MC, um, who will give you the details of the fight, and hopefully we'll have enough time for you to be able to ask the boxers a few questions. Thank you very much. Boxing fans, Mr. Abdul, there's very little for me to say. But if one thing I want to emphasize is that most, in the 90% of our former world title holders or who held titles are fought outside of Guyana. Today, we look for them fighting and defending their titles right here in Guyana. Now, the young man to my far right, very brilliant, into the movie industry, He's bringing what is considered a breath of fresh air to the world of boxing, not only to Guyana, but around the world. As we know, this is professional boxing. Right behind me, we have young ladies who are going to be ringers. And today, just acknowledge that they're here to make a person like myself and all the other young men here look good. And for that, I would like to say, um, <laughs> that being said, let me bring to this mic the one and only Mr. Marvin. I'm going to ask you guys one. First of all, I'm going to you guys back in the US because uh, they're the team behind all of us here to make this possible. Okay, the, so I want to thank the Aeon Imagery team. As you all know, we are a movie production company. And now we're stepping into Guyana and the Caribbean to create for all of you the ESPN of Guyana and the Caribbean. Just, just, but we're going to be called Guy Sports 1, Guy Sports 2, and Guy Sports 3. We are here to stay to promote every sport in Guyana. I'm a fanatic boxing fan, and it took one simple call to Elton Derrick Promotions, and we're standing here at the biggest fight ever in Guyana. I promise, first I must promise all the boxers one thing. You are the source and the core of what we do. I understand your sacrifices, and that will not be uh, forgotten, and I will bring it to the forefront that every boxing fan understands what you go through to be who you are. And whether it's cricket, um, you know, soccer, basketball, we're going to be trying to bring it all alive to you. We're going to replace what Guyana has missed since the 70s, that radio, where we saw every punch that Muhammad Ali threw, and we saw every ball run to the boundary when Roy Fredericks hit it. We have taken that away from Guyana and its, and its society because we're all over the place, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, 
And today, we're gonna create a hub where sports can be watched again and to include, to include the audience, to bring them in, to bring them in like it used to be, okay? We are very proud at Ian to be part of this, uh, of this event. And I wanna thank you all for allowing me to say a few words, okay? But we're here to stay, thank you. As I stood there, I remember one of our last promotions. And I have to say to you, our boxing fans, Delta Larry, Mr. Delphimon, the Scorpio is back. Our last promotion was forward. Of the return of the Scorpio, right? And I'm here to stay, guys. Crystal Promotions is here to stay in regards to boxing, legendary, and boxing board, and Mr. Hamid Mohammed. Now, I have to emphasize on something else. Our champion, the man behind this car, Mr. Elton Diary, took out of his training him and his coach to fly from New York to be here. Matter of fact, the flight leaves in hours from now. I cannot brush through this, but what we'll do is try to accommodate them by some means necessary. But first, I know that there's a whole lot to be said, and the media would like to get a piece of this legendary along with the strain to ask them a question or two. But let me try to make it simple and ask Mr. Elton that was trained to come forward and say a few things, such as, I'm gonna ask a question for you. How is Mr. Elton that we doing, physically and mentally? And why he believes that Elton will do nothing else but walk out of this arena, downstairs, successful. Can you answer that question for me? I didn't even question. All right. Most question. Most question. I didn't even question. Why did you ask? Why did we believe that we took it, or why we believe that we're going to win? Oh well, we we prayed for it. Just like I know he prayed for it. I'm sure he believed that he's going to win. You know, they call him Dexter. Kid Marks, but I'm hoping it becomes that's the man Marks and stand there and fight. I like that. That's a good fighter, but we're gonna beat him. You know, I mean, somebody has to come in second place. It's okay. It's all right. You know, you got another chance. But I know that this is going to be a good fight. I want to thank the the guy in the boxing board, Speed Abdul, Malcolm, Daxton, Zinon, and other direct motions for this event taking place in Diana. There's no, he'll tell you there's no other place that I like to come to from the U.S. than Guyana, because I love your food. <laughs> and also, and I love the boxing events. And I know that this fight is just as important for Dexter as well as it is for Elton, but we're well prepared mentally, physically. We were ready since last year. Even though it got postponed, I made the taper off from training, then we right back to training because I know he's still training and he's doing whatever is necessary for him to get, try to get this victory, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't see it happening. Okay. All right, yeah, ask your question. Uh, the question is, Elton won the first fight. He may be thinking that the second fight will go the same way. How do you prepare him mentally to look at the fight differently? Well, you gotta understand, in, in life, as people grow, things change. You know, just as people, they change. You know, I'm not expecting him to be the Dexter Marks from 2010, whatever it was that we fought. Mex would be a more advanced, more polished Dexter Marks. But what he has to also realize that we have a more advanced and more polished Elton Derry. So, you know, this is going to make for a great event. It's going to make for a beautiful fight. I'm sure the fans will be happy, but we're looking to come out. And as I, you know, like I said, if he stands there and fights and not run, it's going to be a good fight, but if he runs him, we're going to win anyway because he's running. But if he stands there and fight, it'll be a good fight. You know, that's my man. But I'm sorry, that's we're going to beat you, bro. <laughs> All right, man. I got one more question.
What does Elpendari have that Dextomarks don't have? I'll say this, because I can't say what's on that man's mind. I'll say that Dexter has, me on, Elton has the heart, the fortitude, the desire, the, the, the determination, all that it takes to make a world champion. You know, he's been at that highlight already. You know, we came up short, but he's been there already. So he knows what it takes to get to that point. And, you know, that, I'm sure Dexter wants to get to that point, too. And see, he feels as though Elton is in his way. Elton feels that it's, he's in his way. But I'm sure that, like I said, we're, we're more than prepared. We've been ready since last year. Once I heard the fight was going on, I was actually shocked, but I was actually glad also because I know that this is going to be a good fight. And this is what he needs. This is what Dexter needs. And in order for you to get to the next level, the fight, the best has to fight the best. And that's how that works. You know what I mean? So... Diana, thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys, but we gotta actually get to our flight soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. There's a fight on its own. So let's be fair. We have a young lady amongst us, like many of our former fight fighters, incorporate persons who are close to them. Uh, we have in the house the young lady who is defined today as the manager for Dexter Marks. I know I'm gonna put her on the spot, but when it comes to this game of fighting, you gotta fight. Would you say a few words on behalf of Mr. Marks? Let me, let me first say good afternoon to each and every one of you. And it's truly a pleasure to be here. It's truly a pleasure to witness such a great event to happen in Guyana, one of the big and biggest boxing fight match ever. Dexter has evolved. Dexter, the kid marks, is not the, the kid marks you know from 2011. And what I love just now when you were talking Instead of referring to your boxer, you refer to my boxer. Which means that he's in your mind, he's in your thoughts, and you have to be prepared. Because he is prepared mentally, physically, and every other aspect you can think of. Dexter has the ability to win this fight. This is no talk, but on the night of April 20th, 2024, you are going to witness talent, not speech. I'm not going to say much. Dexter will not say much. But in the ring is where we will have Howard talking with the fist, of course. He has this. I have confidence in him. His coaches have the confidence in him as well. And he has the confidence in himself, which is all that matters. He has all the support that he needs right now to get to that place. And so we have no thought whatsoever of taking second place. <laughs> I know all of us can go back to some saying that our grandparents said to us, a stilton will keep it a wise ears. Do we all remember that movie? Ah, uh, when you come to shoot, shoot, don't talk. We had a dead man. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to caution you all. There's going to be very few words here with our main event fighters. And I think their representatives have represented them well. But we may not have another opportunity to pass this mic to them. Even if it's one word, I want you to agree with me that we need to hear him say something. Yes. So. Yes. I'm going to move from my right to my left, to my left, to my right. Mr. Dexter Marks, would you say something to us? I want to say good afternoon, everyone. Um, I appreciate you being here. I want to thank the Boxing Bowl. I want to thank 
ਆਮ ਦਾਵੇ ਹਨ ਸਬਸਟਾਰ ਹਨ ਮਿਸਨ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਫੋਰ ਇਨ ਜਮ ਚੋਇਟੀ ਫੋਰ ਵਿਦ ਹਿਮ ਮਾਈ ਸੈਲਫ ਵੈਲ ਐਵਰੀ ਬਾਡੀ ਨੋ ਬੀ ਆਮ ਆਈ ਡੋਟ ਟੂ ਮਚ ਸਪੀਕ ਇਨ ਬਟ ਇਨ ਅਲਸ ਪੋਇ ਅਲਸ ਪੋਇ ਇਨ ਦ ਟਾਈਮ ਫੋਰ ਏਪਰਲ 20 ਵਿਚ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਇਨ ਮਾਈ ਆਰ ਡਿਜ਼ਾਇਰ I asked God for two things for this year. It's for see my big son, my big son is away from me for 12 years and to fight for Tiger and God should be away. my big son come and no I have not Tiger. I mean there's no way impossible I can do this because I know it to myself. I push it in all the action work. And coming April 20th, David, prepare yourself. Okay, it's not an easy one. Trust me, my brother. I know you are one. You're not to be afraid about these still friends all the time. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> all right. Mr. the one and only and the great Elton Dar. Uh, first let me just say thank God for this opportunity again to be home in Guyana that we are I can be part of one of the big bo- biggest boxing event in the sport area and also be a part of promotion with Siam Bristol Promotion Ghana Peter Abdul of the Ghana Boxing Board of Control and Ghana Mr. Mohammed Khan of Ghana TV Network to make this happen um I've been preparing for to return to the ring last year November December we had quite a um, few hurdles to get over but I've been prepared I've been ready to get back in the ring sometimes now. And uh, you know, I'm thankful that this opportunity came up where me and Dexter can fight each other. And, you know, I've been the quiet guy the whole promotion. So <laughs> when his manager is saying that um Dexter is in the mind of my trainer that <laughs> well, I, the last I checked, I was the quiet guy not saying nothing. He was the one who said a whole lot. Um But this is promotion this is fighting that's just how you promote a fight that's how you get things going I understand that but April 28 I'm prepared to be myself prepared to win prepared to shine and we check my track record I show up championship fights and I really do handle my business I have that experience um and I will show that April 28th also I believe in God as well and then April 28th I will walk out that ring victorious like I always do in championship fights and I want to say thank you to everyone that's here all the fans that's going to buy a ticket come support us and all the sponsors that come on board that haven't come on board yet and for everyone that's working behind the scenes to make this possible so see you guys April 20th thank you we are still Gang's brother next <laughs> Okay, uh, just before we open the floor to the press, I will first want to acknowledge two very important individuals, one of whom is going to be making their debut as a professional, and the other would have been his first time fighting in Ghana after gaining a world title. So let me first introduce to you at this point, Mr. Kevin Alicott. Good day, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. First of all, I want to say thanks to um, Elton Darius Promotion. You know, it's an honor to be on this card. As a fighter, I want to say thanks to um, Mr. Peter Abdul and his team. I want to say thanks to Mr. Bristol Promotion and all the sponsors that are on board. Thanks to the media and everyone that is sitting here. My name is Keith Nalikak, for those who don't know. Um, now I'm going into the pro world. I'm so excited to be here and to put on those eight tongues. I know it's going to be exciting. This is what I do all my life. For 18 plus years I've been fighting. And I love the sport of boxing. I'm here to entertain. You know, like they call me like the Alika. If you blink or look away, you might miss it. You know, so people come out to show your love and you know, I want you to pay keep clean attention to everything that is about to happen in the night. It's an exciting card already. We have one of the big fights which is Dexter Marks and Elton Darry it's going to be nice myself on that card is going to be entertaining too and um I know it's a bit scared 
in the in the professional realm now because the lion is coming aboard. You know, I'm I'm excited to fight. It's what I love to do, and um, I can't wait. I can't wait to just perform and show you guys what I love doing. Thank you. Mr. Disciple. Special good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. Bristle Promotions, Elton Diary Promotions, thank you once more to have me here. Thank you for being here, Car, Mr. Abdul, also everyone else that is here this afternoon. The last time I fought, it was in Australia. That's where I came back. The first WBL Tour champ. The first WBL World Champion to our country, Guyana. It's going to be here a very long time because nobody else from any other country have stepped or asked the question to fight me for it. However, as we have a world title fight here on our hands with Elton Barry and Dexter Marks, maybe someday I'll be into that same position with my title as well, confirmed by Mr. Bristol, Sim Elton Barry, and Mr. Peter Abdul, that will be possible. Also, with our new hands that we have on board. But that much more to say concerning about my fight. Well, first time I fought an Elton Barry card, it was on the 23rd of same April, my daughter's birthday, her first birthday. I gave her a special gift in 37 seconds. So coming now, it's just three days before her birthday. I like to celebrate early. I'm already celebrating. So probably we do this more faster. Mr. Abdul maybe could say something to that because I just want to get over it, get it done. This is Guyana versus Barbados. This is how we even go in the super cricket. So I got to show what I am here for. I'm here to stay. Along with Dexter Marks and Elton Dari. Dex is getting old, maybe someday I see him, but quick hands right now is Elton Dari. <laughs> maybe someday I get Mr. Elton Dari too as well, you know. But this is the future. I plan to the future, so maybe it all could be possible. Thank you very much for having me here. <laughs> uh, guys of the press, I, 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 I have to make a comment. It's, it's important. Um, Alicock is 126. Campaigns at 126. Can possibly make 122. De Silva is 122. Dari is a 118 pound natural fighter can fight at 122. Dexter Marks knocked out a guy very recently who came in from Panama, I think it was, at 122. So here's my question for you. Is it possible that we are looking at a real war? In, in, the, in the next couple of years to establish supremacy among these four guys. Person press needs to ask themselves. Mm. All right. All right. At this time, I'll open the floor to questions. Uh, please. Raul Tony. Mm. Raul Tony, catch for news. Uh, Mr. Abdul, two questions actually. One to Mr. Abdul. Um, how important is this fight? I fight on no, no, no. <laughs> how important is this fight? Uh, we, we understand how important the WBA title is. And this would be the second time a Guyanese would be holding the WBA um, gold title following Lennox Allen's exploit. How important is this though? And would they get a faster shot at the world title faster than Lennox would have that world title shot? Um, I can't answer that for sure. I, I can tell you what the, the hierarchy is, the progression is. Literally, technically, once you've won the WBA gold, and you remember when the, the next one, we had to check this out in great detail. And what happened at that, that stage was um, the WBA proposed two elimination fights. In other words, two, two, the number two, number three. The, the number two fought the number four, I think, and the number uh, three fought the, the number five to establish two fighters for, for that uh, the title. We don't know how the possibility is that you could have a direct shot at it immediately, uh, or you could have an elimination bomb that is required by the WBA to establish that you are going to be the one fighting for the title. So it could be both ways. Generally speaking, it is that it is usually decided at, um, at the WBA convention, at which point all uh, they're like the WBC in terms of the fact that at that point every weight class and division and each title is discussed 
And what happens is, um, is there's a board that actually sits down and looks at it and recommends what needs to go from there. I think our first step is a very important one we do, we, we shouldn't miss the all, which is somebody got to win this fight. Once that somebody wins the fight, we need to make representation to the WBA at earliest uh, about actually directly going to the world title. Thanks. Right? So good. at the most, I would imagine it would be one way. Okay? All right. So I didn't like the fact that you stole. No, that's all right. But I didn't like the fact that you stole our ideas for the next question that we're about to ask, that I'm about to ask, actually. This is Stefan and, and Kevin. So I noticed Stefan would have jumped Kevin and went directly to Elton, who is a bit outside of his weight class. But I want to know if, you would, if it's possible that we could see the two um, lining up sometime soon, given the fact that Kevin is probably being one of our most accomplished amateur boxers and who many have been asking to become a pro for quite some time. And now we have Stefan, an up and coming professional boxer. Would we be seeing that anytime soon? Well, um, how can I put it for you? I put it this way for you. Uh, before being anything to do with the boxing world, I'm a tremendous boxing fan. I like to see fights, and I like to see them on this. Uh, literally, and, and the WBC and men of sanctioned bodies are like this. What we do very often is we encourage fighters uh, either to drop a bit of weight or to put on a bit of weight so that they can meet each other in the ring, which is why I call their weights out. The truth of the matter is that um, if these four guys ever sat down uh, to think about which one of them is a supreme boxer, uh, the only way we're going to find out is if those matches are done. If they come close enough, close enough in weight division, the, the guy in the boxing world will sanction the fight. The sanction fights based on the fact that uh, they're close enough in weight division, so one man can't unnecessarily hurt the other. Uh, two, that the public wants the fight. And I think you already know the answer to that. The public would love to see these four guys actually square off and, and, and produce one supreme man standing around them. Um, I don't know who that is going to be. But you got Dexter, who's an old teacher, the old teacher that in Texas taught a couple of them to fight. You got Dari, who's standing apparently a, a, a world apart at 115 on his own, and he can easily go up. But there's not, there, this is not just competition, but I suspect with uh, Mr. Khan on board, uh, this kind of competition will probably make these fighters a lot better off financially than they are currently. So all all of the all of the all of the synergies uh, that need to be there are actually there. So what we're doing is going through the grounding part now. We started the first elimination process, which is these two gentlemen will square off. Let's see what happens eventually with all four of them. And 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 there are other Caribbean fighters who are in that weight class who are as good as they are. So at the end of the day, we should we should have some brilliant boxing in Guyana as long as we are able to make sure that cards come together. So the answers. I would love to see the fight, and I know you would too. <coughs> Boxing fans, the media, I would like to do or make one caution. There's a sense of being focused, and I can make many references in regards to the world of boxing. Uh, but one thing that I know for sure, when two persons are prepared to fight, they train, they focus only on their opponent. Today, this team would like to focus 100% on April 20th. I say this as to say, we will, with the assistance of Mr. Mohammed, have what would be considered round table boxing talk events or shows where questions like these will be answered. I know for a fact, as a promoter, there's nothing better than promoting an event that the masses are begging for. So exactly what you're thinking, I've been taught about prior. But yes, I beg of you to let's look at what we have because each and every one of these fighters here has an opponent and that's where they focus. I beg if they're not there to stay there. Am I right? <laughs> Is there anyone else from the uh, audience would like to say, ask something. Okay, since no one has any questions, I want to ask the text to one question. Um, is this fight going to go the distance? I don't think so. Well, I'll prepare myself, I'll prepare my mind mentally on 
I don't think so. Be honest, like I said, it's not since um, 2011. It's 2000. It's 2024. It's 2024, and it's a difference, far difference. I don't think on the time to this time we we have the same. Um, obviously, stand together. If, but um, I don't think it. I don't think it. I don't think it would last. Be honest, I'm speaking to you now. I don't think it lasts well. Though. I want to know the most talk. But I don't think it lasts well. Though. Okay. Elton, Dex has made it clear. He said it clear. He I think he has. He says you got to come to this thing. You know, come to this thing. I, th I think he just. He's, he's going to put you down. Let me just stop. Get back up. Let's cut the nonsense. He just spoke it for both of us. I don't think the same thing. I was behind Dexter's last two fights. I was behind his last opponent. His last opponent was knocked out 15 times in his last 19 fights. I make sure he got that opponent so he can win by a knockout and look nice. <laughs> Good. 10 years, one knockout in 10 years, talking nonsense to me. Because I always say, you know, he's picking he's picking opponent. I don't pick. I, I, have a I don't have a choice. I fight well. I give you that because you have you have knocked no one out in ten years. Anyways, uh, well, let's let's stop. Let, let's stop for I everyone think, who, for everyone who ever see me here in Guyana, know what I'm about. Elton Dari is always prepared to be a dog in that ring. You no are, matter what the situation is, I show up to win. You are a fight for winning. And I'm gonna say Public see nothing, my opponent. My. <laughs> you are a fight. You are a fight. You are a fight. Yo, we got. And we got. You, never, you, never, you never do it. Your fans, all your fans is going away from you because why? Your last fight. <laughs> my last fight. Come you on. wouldn't dare to do that. I fought you a fight with. I fight. I fight, I fight with sprained ankle, boy. <laughs> and didn't make no excuse. I could have not fight, but I did. I went through what I went through that, on that night. And people Always. see people see my performance and they judge based on that without knowing That's my good. story. Yes, this, guys, third, yeah, um, this. April 28th, I'm going to crush you. Oh. April 20th. I, know coach. I, know April, coach I don't need... I don't need coach no. is, the coach is good. I respect your coach. But I know you're going to feel the pain for you. Believe me. <laughs> I know you feel it. No, I do. I feel pain in my heart. I feel pain in my heart. Leave your track sneakers home this time. Nah. <laughs> all right. I am prepared to win. That's it. By all costs. My part just went in. I'm going to be the referee today. That's what today was in. It's right. All right. Um, I think by demand. I would like to have these two guys stand side by side. Don't move. Yeah. All right. I'm with you guys. Um, don't take you short up if you don't have to. All right. All right. All right. If you want to see all your muscles, just a little bit of them. All right. All right, gentlemen. Don't push. No push in, gentlemen. Gentlemen. All right. Thank you very much. All right. I love this. All right. All right. April 20th, Trust me, boxing fans, Everest Ground, C and help me be there. Thank you.